I'd see me the sun do that every evening. It does that every evening. car ain't run in 17 years. The day my husband died, they quit running. Nothing's like it used to be, lady. That's right. You from around here? My name's Tom. Tom T. Triplett. Oh, I'm pleased to meet you. Name's Lucy Nell Crater, my daughter Lucy Nell Crater. What you doing around here, Mr. Triplett? Where you come from, Mr. Triplett? Lady, nowadays people do almost anything. I can tell you my name is Tom T. Triplett and I come from Tarwater, Tennessee, but you never seen me before. How you know I ain't lying? How you know I ain't Aaron Sparks from Singleberry, Georgia? Or how you know I ain't George Speeds from Gracie, Alabama? Or how you know I ain't Thomas Bright from Tula Falls, Mississippi? Oh, I don't know nothing about you. Lady, people don't care how they lie nowadays. Maybe the best thing I can tell you is I'm a man. But listen, lady, what is a man? What do you care in that? Tin box. Tools. Me and that box, between us, we can fix just about anything. Well, if you come out here to work, I'll be able to give you food and a place to sleep. I can't pay. Lady, there's some things mean more to some men than money. Now, I ain't never had a father and mother to tell me nothing, so I found out things myself. Oh, I've been a foreman on a railroad, assisted in undertaking parlor, or... I didn't come over the radio one time for three months with Uncle Roy and his Red Creek Wranglers. I've been a lot of places, and I've done a lot of things. But you know what it all boils down to? I wish I lived in a place like this where I could see me the sun go down every evening like God meant it to do. single. Lady, where would you find an innocent woman today? I wouldn't want any of this here trash I could just pick up. Is she your baby girl? Yes, my one and only. She's the sweetest girl in the world. I wouldn't give her up for nothing on earth. She's smart, too. She can sweep the floor and cook and wash, feed the chickens and hoe. I wouldn't give her up for a casket of jewels. No, don't ever let any man take her away from you. Any man come after her, will have to stay around the place. Lady, there ain't a broken thing on this here plantation I can't fix for you. One arm, jack leg, or not. I'm a man, even if I ain't a whole one. And I got a moral intelligence. Well, I told you, you could hang around and work for food. But you can't sleep in the house. I'll sleep in that shed yonder. Well, I'll do, if you don't mind. My lady. The monks of old slept in their coffins. They wasn't as advanced as we are. Huh? 
done a good job on the steps. I don't hardly recognize the place anymore. You made so many changes. One change you don't know anything about yet. Nobody cares and stops and gives any time. You take my name. Three babies left at the founding home the same day, so they called us the triplets. Why, well, I never would have been able to teach Lucy Hill to say a word if I hadn't cared and stopped long enough. That's the same thing with this whole plantation. I'm even going to make that car run. What you want her to say next? Teach her to say, Tom. You buy me some parts, I'll have this car running good as new. Running where? If there ever was a man who wanted to take her away from me, I'd say no man on earth is going to take that sweet gal of mine away from me. But if he was to say, lady, I don't want to take her away, I want to stay right here. I'd say, mister, I don't blame you none. I wouldn't pass up a chance to live in a permanent place and get the sweetest girl in the world myself. You ain't no fool, I'd say. I figure the parts needed will come to about $14. She. 22, 23. She don't look it because she's so innocent. I'll give you the money. You can walk into town for the parts in the morning. 
Better get some paint, too. You don't want it to rust out. We'll see about that later. you a fine automobile. It's sure and slick as a whistle once I got the hang of it. You want you an innocent woman, don't you? You don't want none of this trash. No, ma'am, I don't. One that won't talk, won't sass, or use foul language. That's a kind for you to have right here. Well, that's right. She wouldn't give me any trouble. Saturday, you and her and me can drive into town and get married. Well, I can't get married right now. I, everything you want to do takes money. I ain't got any. What do you need with money? It takes money. Some folks will do some things anyhow, but I... Well, the way I think, I wouldn't marry no woman I couldn't take away on a trip. Like she was somebody. I mean... Take her to a hotel and treat her. Well, I wouldn't marry the Duchess of Windsor unless I could take her to a hotel and get her something good to eat. Oh, Lucy Nell don't even know what a hotel is. Listen here, Mr. Triplett. You'll be getting a permanent house and a deep well and the most innocent girl in the world. You don't need money. Let me tell you something. There ain't no place in the world for a poor, disabled, friendless, drifting man. have to take my wife away for the weekend without no regards at all for cost. I'll give you $15 for a weekend trip. That's the best I can do. I wouldn't hardly pay for no more than the gas in the hotel. It wouldn't feed her. Well, $17.50. You can take a lunch. You can have the car painted by Saturday. I'll pay for the paint. I'll make it do. I better start scraping the car if I'm going to have it painted by Saturday. Ain't she the most beautiful bride you ever seen? What's eating you, Mr. Triplett? You ain't very cheerful for a new groom. Well, the wedding didn't satisfy me none. We just something a woman in an office did. Nothing but paperwork. Well, this here paper is the most important thing. And that blood test. That's what galled me the worst. What do they know about my blood? Why, if they stake my heart and cut it out, they wouldn't know a thing about me. No, sir, it didn't satisfy me at all. All right, satisfy me. Satisfy the law. The law. It's the law that don't satisfy me. Don't Lucy Nell look pretty? She looks like a baby doll. You got you a prize. Yeah. Here's Lucy Nell's things. And here's your lunch. Now you take good care of my baby girl, you hear? I need more money. What? I gave you seventeen fifty this morning. I spent it on the license. Most of it. That ain't true, Mr. Triplett. License costs two dollars. I'm talking about the car license. Oh. Well, 
I reckon you'll have to wait and take your trip some other time. Lady, a man is divided into two parts, body and spirit. Now, the body is like a house. It don't go anywhere. It can wait. But the spirit, the spirit is like that automobile out there. It's always on the move. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. Fifteen dollars. That's all I got. Quit fussing with me. I'll make it do. Once she wakes up, uh, I'll pay for it now. Uh, she's a hitchhiker. I can't wait. I've got to be on my way. She looks like an angel from heaven. somewhere. Why don't you put your suitcase in the back? You ride more comfortable. What am you on? Huh? Oh, that. Why, uh, I lost it on a hot day like this one. What happened? Well, when I was about your age, I decided to leave home and walk all the way to New Orleans. I was toting a suitcase, too, just like you. Oh, it was hot that summer. It was so hot the cricks was all dried up and the catfish were swimming around their own sweat. Well, by the time I reached New Orleans and toting that suitcase, my arm just melted right out of my sleeve. You're funning me. Now, why would I do that? Now, why would a smart young fellow like you be running away from his folks, huh? Son, I got the best old mother in the world, so I reckon you only got the second best. Well, there's nothing so sweet as a boy's mother. She taught him his first prayers at her knee, give him love when nobody else would. Boy should never leave her. Not for anything in the world, not even for a casket of jewels. With all the trash running around, she's probably the only innocent woman I'll ever meet. I know when I left my mother, Deserted her, I did. I broke her heart. Made myself the lonesomest man in the country. You let me alone. I ain't you. Well, son, I never rude a day of my life like I rude the one when I left my dear golden-haired mother. She was an angel of heaven. You go to the devil. Let me out. I don't want to ride with you no more. Let me out. You forgot your suitcase! Can 
Can I get you anything else? Some coffee, maybe? <laughs> you sure ain't much of a one for talking, are you? Which way you going? The only reason I'm asking is because the truckers that come in here, some of them are my friends, and maybe I can get you a lift. Well, that fellow you came in here with left. He paid for your ham and grits, but, well, you still owe 35 cents for the pastry you ate. Well, that'll be Miss Buell. She's, she's the boss. You can sit around just as long as you like, but well, maybe you better pay now. You can go on home now, George. I'll take over. She still owes 35 cents. Fella came in with her and paid for a meal and then left. She's been sitting there an hour, just eating pastry, not saying a word. I guess maybe she's waiting for someone else to pick her up. Yeah, I know her kind. Boy here says you owe 35 cents. What's the matter? Can't got your tongue? Come on, pay up and then get. Fresh one, huh? Here, now, don't you go using no foul language around me, you trash. Do you want to pay up or am I going to shake it out of you? look like she understands. Here, now, stop that. Who are you? I'm a husband. Lucy Nell. Lucy Nell. Everything's going to be all right, Lucy, now. Come on. When you see the hotel, Lucy, now, well, it's got a big lobby and a dining room, and I'm going to buy a bunch of flowers to put on the bureau for you. So uh, we're going to enjoy ourselves without no regards at all for cost. to that kid. Tom. What did you say? 